Today, guys, we're going to be talking about Rose's Scabbard, one of the most important episodes of the series, and one that I'm sure has been talked about everywhere, online, in people's everyday lives. This is an episode that is talked about a lot, and I've been kind of alternatively excited about and dreading talking about this episode. Because while it is a monumental episode of the show, it's one that I imagine there isn't a whole lot more to say about. So I decided I was going to take on this review from a different angle than I think a lot of people probably have. I was going to try to find a fresh perspective on this episode to talk about, and I think I found that fresh perspective. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right into the review. As per usual, the spoiler warning here is str stronger than it is in the typical episode because this episode does affect a lot going forward, and it is, as I mentioned, one of the most monumental episodes of the series. If you haven't watched the entire series yet, and you haven't watched this episode yet, this is an episode you need to watch. You don't want me to spoil it for you. So, spoiler warning, for this episode, and for potentially other episodes of the series, it really depends on whether or not I have time to touch on a couple of the really minor things I want to touch on here. This episode is all about Pearl. This episode starts out, the Crystal Gems have gone to the Strawberry Battlefield, because they've decided they want to collect some weapons, specifically, uh, apparently some very large weapons, I guess. Garnet decided she wanted a giant axe for some reason. And hey, I've heard of dumber reasons to run out to a distant place and pick up an object that you don't really need. And it does provide some really cool background comedy in a later scene. So as far as plot setup scenes go, this one's not bad. And already in this scene we get what is one of the themes of this episode and there are a couple of them one that's more obvious and i will touch on a little bit but that's why i feel like everybody's talked about so i'm going to touch on the one that i don't feel like people talk about as much but let's move right along we get some different perspectives on the war that happened over 5,000 years ago according to pearl in this episode amethyst wishes that she had been there to see it Garnet is brutally honest with herself about how horrible it actually was, and we actually see kind of an extension of that in Warp Tour and Marvel Madness, where Garnet is very in denial over the possibility of Homeworld ever returning. We can tell that this war did affect her a lot more than she lets on outwardly. And Pearl copes with her memories of the war by romanticizing them, by treating them like they're nobler, for lack of a better term, than they actually were. And we get a little bit more of this later on in Sworn to the Sword, when she's talking about how she used to rush to protect Rose and then later find out that really all she did was get in the way and put herself in constant danger. And that's the perspective I want to come at this episode from. I mentioned all the way back in Keep Beach City Weird that the way they should have handled Bernardo's character is by tearing down his delusions of this world that he has created for himself and then helping him build himself back up. And that's exactly what they do with Pearl in this episode. This episode is Ronaldo's plot from Keep Beach City Weird done properly. Because you can see throughout this entire episode, Pearl's views of the war and her views of Rose are challenged and sometimes even so much is destroyed. But by the end of the episode, she's actually in a healthier place than she was when she started. Because what they also find at the Strawberry Battlefield is the scabbard to Rose's sword, which is a lot smaller than you would expect it to be considering how large Rose's sword was the last time we saw it and when we see it in subsequent episodes where that's a nitpick. And it's in fact Lion who finds the scabbard, almost as if he kind of already knew where it was or he was already kind of looking for it. And then later, when Pearl is talking about Rose's scabbard, and this is the scene where I was talking about that other theme of the episode becomes quite obvious, it's very clear as she is talking about Rose's scabbard and Rose's sword, that she's actually talking about herself and Rose. And through the subtext here, through her choice of words and her body language, it becomes very, very clear that Pearl had romantic feelings for Rose that may or may not have been returned by Rose in their entirety. That's a topic for debate, and it's not something I'm going to get into here today. And after we get a little bit of background comedy that's actually quite good with Garnet and Amethyst trying to maneuver the giant axe through the temple door, once the two of them are out of the room and it's just Stephen and Pearl left, Pearl starts talking about Rose's secret armory, which Steven has already been to with Lion and Connie. And up until this point, Pearl has been building herself up as Rose's only confidant, the only person who knew Rose's secrets, other than Rose herself, obviously. And you can just imagine she was waiting for the moment to take Rose's son to Rose's armory and become the mentor to Steven that Rose was to her. And now she can't do that because of the Lion. Her place in this world that she has built for herself has started to crumble. She has started to realize that she's not as important, she's not as central to everything as she thought she was. Just like Ronaldo in Keep Beach City Weird. Last comparison, I promise. And after she discovers that Steven's already been to the armory and he knows how to access the stuff that's hidden there and that there's stuff hidden there that 
Pearl didn't even know about, and then learns that Rose's sword, the object of their trip to the armory in the first place, they're now looking for Rose's sword, isn't even there, but Stephen knows where it is, and it's in the lion. Now it is lion who has, in Pearl's mind, become Rose's confidant, who has, in Pearl's mind, replaced Pearl in that worldview that she had constructed for herself about the past. So she starts screaming at Lion, she starts yelling at everybody else, to the point when she actually goes so far as to yell at Stephen because he didn't actually know Rose and she did. And I mean, wow. And then she runs off and warps away, and Garnet lets Stephen go after her because I'm, I'm sure Garnet knows at this point that Stephen is the only person who can help Pearl through this. Doesn't mean he's going to be able to, but he's the only one who has a chance. So he follows her to part of the strawberry battlefield. It's these floating land masses, and I guess it's on one of these land masses, the furthest out land mass, that Rose actually decided to start the rebellion. Or to at least remain behind as part of the rebellion, it's not really clear. Because after Stephen jumps from one floating land mass to the next to reach her, and almost falls to his death, by the way, and once again, Pearl doesn't climb down and help him up. That is how wounded she is by this situation. After he confronts her, Pearl shows Stephen a holographic recreation of the moment that Rose and Pearl decided to stay and become rebels. And once again, the feelings that Pearl has for Rose are obvious here. But we also don't know if any of this is clouded by Pearl's perceptions of events. We have no way of knowing if this is exactly as it actually happened. In fact, the scene seems very uncertain, and you have to wonder if it used to, because I imagine Pearl replays the scene for herself all the time. You have to wonder if it used to seem so uncertain when she would replay it for herself, or if it seems kind of uncertain now, because now Pearl is feeling uncertain about her place in things. But Stephen continues to press Pearl regarding her feelings in this situation, and they have a very poignant talk that I'm not going to get into too much detail about, because it's something you have to watch, that basically boils down to the fact that Stephen doesn't care if Pearl is the most important person in the world, because she's the most important person in the world to him. And they go back down to the ground, and we get this montage to music of the only time in the series we've actually seen Steven and Pearl really spend any significant amount of time together just enjoying each other's company. And it's very heartfelt, and I love it. I kind of wish I knew what they said during this scene, because we don't hear anything they say. But I can get past that, because it's very touching. And then the episode ends with them riding back on Lions Back together, and Pearl gives Steven this little look that says that she's kind of realizing that maybe, just maybe, she doesn't have to be the most important person in the world. She doesn't even have to be the most important person to Rose. Maybe she just has to be there for Steven. Maybe that can be her purpose. She had built up this romanticized view of the past, of her own role in the past, in her mind, and when she had that perception of herself torn down, because it wasn't actually true, she was, with the help of her family, able to pick herself up and rebuild herself, or at least start rebuilding herself. And this episode affects so many things. I honestly don't think that Pearl would have had such a positive reaction at the end of Sworn to the Sword when Stephen declared that he was intending to fight alongside Connie, as she actually did in this episode, had she not experienced what she did in this one. I don't think that Pearl would have been able to stand up to Peridot in Back to the Barn the way that she did if she hadn't experienced what she did in this episode. This episode was the beginning of Pearl's transformative arc as a character. And I can't wait to see where it progresses, because it is still ongoing. I absolutely love this episode. It's one of my favorite episodes of the entire series, hands down, of course. And in terms of overall quality of the story and the characterization, this is the only episode which, in my mind, still challenges Jailbreak for its place as my favorite episode of the entire series. And objectively, this episode is probably better. All of that said, guys, what did you think of this episode? If you have seen it, let's get a discussion going in the comments section down below. Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys. Later.